Um, so hi everyone, my name is uh, Christine. I am a PhD student at the Melbourne Neuropsychiatry Centre at the University of Melbourne. I'm, um, it's really great to be presenting at this conference actually. I'm disappointed I cannot be there with you all in person. Um, unfortunately, uh, COVID's a bit of the disruptor of plans, um, but I'm nevertheless excited to be able to share my work with you guys virtually. And um, hopefully I can get to the conference in, in person next time. So today I'm going to be telling you about my recent work looking at the consistency of DMN suppression or default mode network suppression during cognitively demanding tasks. You can click on that. Okay, so the default mode network um, is so called because it comprises a set of distributed brain regions that uh, show higher active activity when we're at rest. So when we're not engaged in any other kind of externally directed tasks. And there's now a plethora of research that has linked this high resting activity to our internal self-directed processes, hence the terms of default um, mode of brain function. What's interesting about this network and a cool feature of it is that this network is suppressed when we're actually engaged in externally directed um, task. And so what this means is that this is an adaptive feature of brain function that essentially allows us to transfer or toggle our attention between our internal states and the external environment. Initially, it was thought that the DMN was a simple unitary task negative network, but more recently, we think that it's a complex heterogeneous system, and this is becoming more apparent during high cognitive processes. So a closer look at the literature, we do see evidence of selective suppression in the DMN in response to changing levels of cognitive demand. Most notably is the finding that the only DMN region to show consistent suppression across various tasks and various cognitive loads is the medial prefrontal cortex. Another interesting finding is that at high levels of task demand, this suppression effect extends to regions beyond the default mode network, such as the insula, for example. So all these suggest heterogeneity in the DMN. However, no studies have investigated the consistency of DMN suppression across multiple cognitive tasks in the same sample. And so that's what we did. And we hypothesized that we would observe consistent suppression across the tasks in at least the medial prefrontal cortex, as well as suppression in additional non-DMN regions. We also thought that the magnitude of suppression would be consistent within individuals. So we had 85 healthy controls who were scanned while completing three fMRI cognitive tasks. These tasks were all mapped um, to reflect task-related suppression against a resting baseline, which essentially just means that the tasks were interspersed with resting periods. So in the first task was a cognitive reappraisal task, and this one comprised a passive or low demand con um, condition where participants simply viewed negative or neutral images. It was also a high demand condition where participants were instructed to use pre-learned cognitive reappraisal strategies um, to attenuate their emotional response to negative stimuli. In the emotional face matching task, this too similarly had a low demand condition where participants um, had to match the orientation of shapes, as well as a high demand condition where participants had to match the gender of faces that were presented with either sad or fearful facial expressions. Finally, we had the self-referential task, and this one's a little bit different in that it comprised a self-referential condition, which activates the DMN, and an external attention condition, which deactivates the DMN. And so participants were shown trait adjective words, and in the self-referential condition, asked to appraise if the word described them, and in the external attention condition, to determine if the word had four or more vowels. Now, because our primary interest was in looking at um, DMN suppression in higher order cognitive processing relative to rest, we restricted our analyses to the higher demand condition in each of the relative tasks. And so our contrasts of interest were rest reappraisal, uh, face matching and letter discrimination of the um, external attention task. So to identify regions of common task-related suppression across the tasks, we conducted group-level conjunction analyses, 
and to investigate the consistency of suppression within individuals, we computed cross-task correlations between pairs of suppression maps. So for our results, from our conjunction analysis, we found a clear distinct overlapping pattern of task-related suppression that was common across the three tasks that comprised some DMN regions as well as additional non-DMN regions, as we expected. As you can see from this figure, we found common suppression in the medial prefrontal cortex, the dorsal posterior cortex, extending to the cuneus precuneus, as well as the posterior insula and surrounding cortex. The results of the cross-task pairwise correlations showed that the regions comprising this common suppression subnetwork were correlated within individuals. And what this means is that individuals who showed robust suppression in set of regions in one task showed similar robust suppression um, in those regions in another task and the other task. So from our findings, we can conclude that there is a distinct suppression subnetwork that's common across all tasks that's associated with high demand that includes some DMN regions, but also extends to non-DMN regions. And that this magnitude of this suppression is correlated with individuals. But what does this all mean? So we'll start with the medial prefrontal cortex. So this region, the finding that this region was the only region to show consistent suppression is consistent with previous work. And this may be because previous work has linked this region to preferentially be associated with self-appraisal processes. So it might be that suppression of this region during externally directed attention may be reflecting disengagement of these self-related processes and actually represent a true default region as conceptualized by the TMN definition. We didn't find suppression in the other posterior DMN regions and we weren't expecting to. And the reason for this is because recent research has found that these regions are actually actively involved in facilitating cognitive transitions, such as switching between rest and task states. And this is especially if these task switches are particularly large or dissimilar. Therefore, this suggests these regions may play a role in maintaining attentional vigilance to environmental cues in order to allow for reconfiguration to new contexts. It also may mean that any suppression that may occur during task states may not be captured by signal averaging with fMRI. We did, however, observe suppression in the dorsal posterior cingulate. Now, the posterior cingulate broadly is a part of the DMN, but it's important to note the distinction between the ventral subregion, which is directly linked to the DMN, and the dorsal subregion, which has been identified as a hub between the DMN and cognitive and attentional networks. So suppression of this region may represent modulation of these networks in order to allow for reallocation of cognitive resources in order to facilitate efficient task performance. We also found suppression in the posterior insula, which is common in high demand studies. This region in particular is involved in interoception and self-awareness self um, and body states. And so suppression of this region may represent the disengagement of these internal sensory states as we become more immersed in the task. Finally, our finding of consistent intra-individual suppression may reflect a stable adaptive feature of brain function, which may serve to optimize goal-directed behavior as well as efficient functioning in daily life. So our summary is that task-induced suppression during high cognitive demand reflects a distinct and consistent brain signature that is not limited to DMN regions, but also extends to regions involved in broader aspects of self-awareness and cognitive control. I did want to note some limitations, however, and one of them is that we didn't look at modulated levels of demand difficulty in this study, um, primarily because we were interested in comparing high cognitive demand to the resting state, but it would be interesting to look at. Um, the age of our sample as well, given that they were youth and young adults, um, especially keeping in mind um, age effects that there is evidence that it, younger populations are more efficient at cognitive functions and are better able to suppress the, the DMN compared to older populations just because of general cognitive decline. 
Nevertheless, our findings do extend our understanding of the neural mechanisms that underlie efficient cognitive function. And given that DMN suppression is such a vital part for efficient cognitive function, any disruptions to these processes may have important implications for understanding the psychopathology in several psychiatric disorders, um, such as depression. So my future directions is I plan to look at the DMN suppression in depression um, and potential links to individual differences and treatment outcomes. Finally, I have to acknowledge these people who have just been obviously hugely instrumental in helping me pull this all together. I was very much a collaborative team effort, and I'm just kind of the one that's presenting it. I also wanted to say, thank the Aspersense Committee for inviting me to present at the conference. It's a real privilege, so thank you for that.